we are going to go over the wave 5 reset. Uh, this is supposed to be accomplished prior to our wave 5 bidding so that everybody is uh, on a little bit more of an even playing field and that we actually get some um, competition going. So let's go over what I intend to accomplish here. So I'm going to talk about why there's a change, what the changes are, and then I'm actually going to walk through my current roster and transition it to what it will be moving forward. So, why the change? Um, I was kind of a newbie to Mega Mech, and with that comes some inexperience and not knowing how everything actually functions. I'm very much a tabletop wargamer, and moving to Mega Mech was a transition I was hoping to make the best of, and it's taken me a couple weeks. So, fortunately, I got plugged in with a community. Uh, this is the MRC folks. Uh, it's kind of a competitive um, Battletech server. There's a whole bunch of people there who've been using Mega Mech for a couple years, and they're much more savvy with the system and how it functions and they have lots of opinions on how things work and I am drawing from their experience um, moving forward. And some of that I've actually gotten to experience personally. So pulling from their stuff and what I've actually gone through. The other part has been that the campaign so far has kind of been a cakewalk. Um, in many aspects, but it is also moving towards pushing the player character out of being used in games because several of us are at now the point where we don't really gain anything by going on missions because we have priced ourselves out of being useful. We have priced ourselves out of being able to gain anything by going on a mission. So we're kind of going to do a little bit of a reset in that. So some of the changes that I want to go over are changes just straight up to the SBA table. Um, these are a lot of what we had before. Some of the red you see here are many of the changes that I have made. Um, you'll see that I took out Melee Master and Melee Specialist along with Zweihander, mostly because we're the clan side. We're not into the physical combat stuff. We would much rather shoot you than kick you. Now, we will still kick you, but we're just not going to do it as well. Some of the SPAs were overpriced. Some of them have been undercosted. Um, some of them I did not include previously because I didn't know what they did. And some of them I didn't know what they did, so I undervalued it because I just grabbed SPA levels from Alpha Strike and moved it over. But Alpha Strike and Classic are not a one-to-one -one comparison, so I can't really use those things to the same effect in Classic that they were used in Alpha Strike. Some of them work better, some of them don't. So some of those um, new SPAs coming on board are Gunnery Specialization, natural aptitude gunnery um, and though those are the those are the main two that have been added to our table um, other than clan pilot training we are we are adding that and i will talk about that in a minute the other part that is new or has changed is the cost of everything so i'm going to scroll this down just a bit more Oop, too much there we go so my SBA levels were not costed appropriately. So an SBA level one, that's going to cost one. Uh, piloting bump is going to cost three. Gunnery bump is going to cost five. A level two SBA will cost six. And a level three SBA will cost 12. The piloting and gunnery bumps have to stay within one step of each other. 
So before I was allowing a two step, now we're going to now we're going to narrow that in and bring it to a one step. So a 2 3 is okay, but a 2 0 is not because that's too many steps away from each other. So you'll notice that this is an ability tree and this is abilities without a tree. So that's one of the one of the changes here. So Moving forward, I increased the point cost, excuse me, the levels of Hopping Jack and Jumping Jack. So Hopping Jack gives a minus one modifier to all of your shooting, which is really good because that's not based on the energy type. That's not based on what weapon it is. It's not based on ranges, none of that. And most of the time, whenever you jump, you're jumping into probably a very advantageous position. But that also incentivizes jumping, which then also gives you a defensive boon because your movement type is jump. So whatever your hexes are worth, you add one to your TMM because you jumped. So hopping jack and jumping jack are arguably much stronger than I thought they were to begin with. So they required a bump in price. Now, before I get too far into this, you can just straight up buy the abilities with the exception of gunnery specialization without climbing the tree. So if you wanted to just go straight to Sandblaster, you can pay six SPA points or six uh, experience to be at a level two SPA and grab Sandblaster or Cluster Master without any issues. Gunnery specialization is a special case, and I'll get to that in a moment. But to climb the tree, you have to pay the entry cost, which is whatever the entry level is. So for hopping jackets two, maneuvering aces two, cluster hitters one. Uh, those are really the only three that actually scale. So we'll start with cluster hitter. So Cluster Hitter is a level 1 SPA. I got to pay two experience points to buy Cluster Hitter. All right. So then I look at the level 2 SPA and, oh, that's six. But in order to climb the tree, I spend time and therefore I gain a discount in my cost. So because I'm going to spend at least one round at Cluster Hitter, to then move on to Cluster Master, I can pay four points for, I'm sorry, I can pay two extra points because that's one third the cost of the new level because six divided by three is two. So that means if I climb the tree, Cluster Master or Sand Blaster will cost me four points. That's it. Well, four points and one round. You can buy it just straight out for six, but you only get so many kills. It's not like a, a reoccurring thing. And even then, if you do gain consistently a number of XP per, per, per match, well, you still have that, you still run that risk of, well, that pilot may not actually come back. So climbing the tree is cheaper in the experience cost, but it's gonna, it's gonna take a little bit more time to climb the tree. But the whole point is I can get to this level three SPA for less cost than just straight up buying it. And sometimes those kills or those experience points are hard fought and therefore you want to make the most use of those as you possibly can. So how this would work for cluster hitter is you pay one third the cost of the level two SPA. So one third of six is two. So you add that to your original cost of buying the level one, which is how we get to four. Now hopping jack and maneuvering ace both start at level two and jump to a level three. So one third of 12 is four points. So you have your entry cost at level two plus four points gets you to a total of 10 to, for that level three SPA. Otherwise you have to wait until you have 12 kills to get that level three SPA. 
Now, gunnery specialization doesn't really climb, it just doubles up. So we have to pay the entry cost, and then we pay level two a third again for that value. So that one's actually going to cost us eight to be able to fully use gunnery specialization. Now you can either wait until you have eight or buy gunnery specialization at that entry level, and then whenever you get two more kills, then you plug them into actually getting to pick a type. So energy, ballistic, or missile. And energy specialization is this way because it is better than a lot of the level two SBAs, but not as good as the level three SBAs. So it's in that weird middle ground, and it's arguably in a category of its own. So that's why it's in this weird in-between where it costs eight instead of six, but it's not as expensive as 12. So then we get into the SPAs that don't have a tree. I'm gonna move this down. So we can still see it. So we move into the abilities that don't have a tree. These ones, there is no shortcut. There is no anything other than you have to pay the raw XP cost to be able to use them. I kept a dodge because it's avoiding physical attacks. Um, and it's a two point, it's a level two SPA. So it's gonna cost you six kills. So if you've got somebody who is constantly getting kicked, is constantly whatever you want to call it, um, this gives you the opportunity to go, no, I'm going to avoid your physical attacks. It's one of those uh, face hugger types, somebody who is a brawler, constantly getting in their faces, this would be a great SPA for that. It was already available, just one we hadn't really used. Natural gunnery, natural aptitude gunnery, you get to roll 3d6 for gunnery tests, and you get to take the two highest. This one wasn't on our table before. I had natural aptitude piloting, but we know what we know what piloting tests are. Gunnery test is one of those things I'm like, what on earth is a gunnery test? Well, every time you pull the trigger, it's a gunnery test. But that's where it stops. So it is your to hit numbers that this is influencing. Some of you are like, yeah, you roll 3d6, take the two highest. Nah, big, big deal. For those of us that are usually um, playing role-playing games, you're like, oh, you have advantage or some mechanic that's similar. Rolling an extra die and taking the better one is a big deal in those situations because those are typically a linear progression. Now, in a bell curve, it does move you towards the higher end, but it doesn't influence it all that much. So this is still a level two SPA. Range Master and Sniper no longer feed into each other. Um, they still have an aversion, they both have an aversion to short range because Sniper doesn't actually gain anything from being at short range. Um, and Range Master swaps the either long or medium, or if you're using it, extreme ranges, range increments with short range which kind of work together, but they also kind of don't. So I'm leaving those two separate from each other because Sniper is so good. Weapon Specialist is the same thing because again, on a bell curve, minus two to your to hit number is a big deal. Now again, that plus one on the bell curve isn't as much of an influence and you already have to score a critical for this one to take place. So this one was previously at level three. I brought it down to level one because you score critical hits in classic differently than you do in alpha strike. In alpha strike, you get one lucky hit and you go, oh, I didn't even actually have to go internal and break your armor. I just killed that mech. It's like, ooh. Okay, but that's one roll every turn, where in Classic, it's much more fiddly. Um, it can still happen, but it's less likely because you have that possible, you have that through armor possible critical, but you have to confirm the critical and then you have to hit something important. 
in Alpha Strike, there is no confirm critical. It's just roll on that table. There are two no crits on that table, but it still feels much more like something's going to happen. Where in Battletech, or in Classic, you have to roll an 8 or better, which is on the high side of that bell curve. So it feels much less likely. Uh, I had before, I had Pain Resistance was the level 2 and Iron Man was the level 1. Well, Iron Man is the same thing as Pain Resistance, just without the plus 1 to Consciousness rolls. And again, this is a plus 1 to Consciousness rolls. It's very important, but I didn't want to have that at, a, at the same influence as Range Master and Multitasker and some of the other things that are available. The last one I'm going to talk about is clan pilot training. We are all gaining clan pilot training because we're not supposed to be doing melee. So this arguably makes us one worse at melee. So now we'll move on to the uh, other components of our reset. So we are going to start each player at a 3-4 skill. Um, our four vets will start off at a 3-3. Three, three. They will have 20 XP to spread between the four of them. Now, this would easily be um, five points for each of them because there's four. Uh, one thing I needed to talk about with clan pilot training is it's a, it's a negative one level SPA. So a level one SPA is worth two experience. So because this is forcing something on you and it's making you worse at something, you gain two experience points to spend in your pool with clan pilot training. So keep that in mind as we move forward. So with this, each player is going to start at three, four. So I don't get to start at my 2-3 that I bid at. I will start at 3-4. All of the vets will start at 3-3. Three, three. So Bjorn, Edward, Marva, and Blair will all start at 3-3. Three, three. And then all the other warriors that come in will start at 4-4. Four, four. So I'll go through and I'll fix this real quick. Okay, so between the four vets, they're going to get 20 points to spend. So you may remember from before that these are, like I could still spend, I could still give two of these pilots 10 points each. And then with their clan pilot training, they're each going to get that extra um, two points to make 12 points of S 12 points of experience so that way they can get a three point SPA. So what I'm going to do right now is zero out all the values that they have spent because we're going to keep our kill count totals. But for the time being, everybody gets their clan pilot training. Let me fix these with my little bit of OCD. Make these all the same size and centered. There we go. That makes me a little happier. Okay. So between my four veterans, I did give Bjorn a three-point SPA, I gave Edward a two-point SPA, and I gave Blair a one-point SPA when we started. So if I were to do that again, I would give Bjorn up to 12 points, I would give Edward up to six points, and then Blair would gain my, my other two points. That's still 20 points to spend between the four of them. Now. I could do that, I might do that, I'm not sure yet, because I haven't quite figured that part out. 
but um, we have a couple other things to go over just real quick. The piloting is still set at a three, but the gunnery bumps are a five now instead of a seven. One other thing that has changed other than all of those things, because I also have, I have one, two, three, four kills in um, trials. So this goes from two up to six because I had I had four kills that were none of them were headshots they were all just normal um, destruction of the machine not the pilot so those got to add to my XP bonus but I also have these bonus XP for reaching each of these levels because we're the player character we're supposed to be a little bit ahead of everybody else and if our vets can start with up to 20 experience well we need to start building that pool a little bit faster so I get two four seven ten more points to my total so my trials because my trial of position I gain the, the experience for the kills and I gain the bonus XP for actually making rank. That's how I get to 16 plus the two points I got from clan pilot training just like everybody else did. The rest of these kill totals are going to stay exactly where they are because there's no other, there's no other changes that have to happen with those values. Now I did add Seikon and Khan on here, but I also changed the thresholds of glory for Star Colonel, Galaxy Commander, because uh, I had to create one for Seikon and Khan. In our campaign, the maximum points you can gain from just planets, if you if you were to bid first all the way down, and you gain and you got all those points, and you got um, basically a perfect bidding score, then you would max out at 61 points. Well, we also have Zelbringen and we have boons for bringing our pilots home. So that's another 40 points we can gain because we get two from each of those and then that times 10 rounds is another 40 points. So we max out at 101 points. So Getting, getting to the position of Khan is super difficult. Can it be done? Yes. Is it likely to be done? No. But most people don't get that far. Seikon is a little bit closer. But again, you have to go from Seikon to Khan. You don't just jump to Khan. So these two ranks are a little bit different. Uh, but they have achievable point totals. So now that we've gone through each of those changes, I think we are now at the point where I actually spend my kill counts and try to get back my values. See if we can get back in here. So let's double check and make sure that all of these actually are covering what they're supposed to. And they're supposed to go all the way to P57. So that is included. Okay, just to double check. Two, four, six, ten. Okay. So Bjorn does not have enough points to get weapon specialist without giving him some of the points from veteran. I want him to have weapon specialist if nothing else. So out of the 20 points, I'm not gonna give him a full 12. I'm gonna give him at least five because that would get him enough points to where he can get the one SPA that I really think he needs. I think he also should have multitasker, but multitasker is a Where is it at? Level two SPA. So it would be nice for him to have that, but I don't know that I'm going to give him 
more than his fair share because I just gave him his fair share. No, I didn't because that was just five. So I didn't actually give him five points. I gave him three points because he had clan pilot trading. So if I give him just his quarter of the veteran points, he's almost there. But seeing as he's kind of my prize child, I may give him some more. So I may end up shorting Marva because that's arguably what I did last time. So Edward, he was working towards getting um, weapon specialist, excuse me, weapon specialization, no, sorry, weapon specialist ERPPCs because he's running a storm, he's running a Timberwolf D. That's the main armament for that thing. So he's arguably not going to get sniper. He needs multitasker because he has rear facing weapons. So I need to give him enough where he can at least get that. So he's going to get um, a total of six from here, which means I'm giving him four because I want him to start with that. So he's taken four. He's gotten five. I'm, I have 11 points left to spend on my veterans. Now, Marva, arguably I would want her to start at a 2-3 because she's in an adder. That mech is super cheap in Alpha Strike. It is a base 30 points, which means bringing it to level, bringing it to skill 2 is very efficient. It's wonderful. So I'm going to give her no less than 3 of those 11 points, which brings me down to Blair, which means I can give him up to eight. Now, he started with Hopping Jack. If I can get him Hopping Jack to start with, that'd be great because he's in a Nova and he likes to jump because it's super strong. Hopping Jack is a level two SPA, which means he's gonna need at least four. So if I give him, yeah, if I give him four more to get him to six so he can start with that, we're good. So Blair has four. Oop. Sorry. I'm going to put these over here. So Blair got four. Um, Marva, Edward, and Bjorn. So, if Blair gets four, Marva got, where's she at? I needed to give her three more so that way she could get to five. So she's at five. So if she gets three, Edward, what did I give him? He needs to start with multitasker. That would be giving him four. And Bjorn, I gave him at least five. So that gives me seven and nine is 16. I still have four more points I can give someone or I can spread it out and I can give each of them one more, which arguably wouldn't be bad because then they start off with what I gave them at the beginning. So Blair gets hopping Jack. He's good to go. Marva gets a skill bump. Edward gets multitasker and Bjorn, Bjorn can't start with um, weapon specialist ER medium, but he can have a good chunk of the way already ready to go. Unless I give him one more point. So he's going to get one of the four remaining points. So after his first wave match, he can he can have weapon specialization. ER medium. And I'm okay with that. So then Bjorn has spent 12 of his 
Edward has spent six of his for a multitasker. Marva has spent five of hers. And Blair has spent six of his. Just from those 20 points. Now, I still have three more points to give. And I think I may just give everybody one more point. So Blair goes to seven total. Sorry, seven from the beginning. Marva goes to six. And Edward goes to seven. So this goes from four to five. Three to four. Four to five. And five to six. So that gets me to my 20 points spent. So just to confirm, pilot training plus what he starts with, he should be at eight. Pilot training plus what I gave Edward, he should be at seven. Same thing for Marva, except she's at six. And then Blair is also at seven because these starting values plus pilots, the clan pilot training, which is two, that's where they're at for those. Okay. So these can go, those values can go away. Those values can go away. My veterans have been reset to their starting values. Everybody else, they are essentially going to lose these. Now let's see one by one if I can get them back to where they were. So he really wants to get to Sandblaster because he's got that shotgun. And I want him to get to Sandblaster. So we got to get him entry level with the cluster hitter. Cluster hitter for two points. And then I'm going to climb that tree at the next wave because he didn't play a game until wave two. So at wave two... He earns two more kills, which allows him to get that bump from level one SPA to level two SPA because they're climbing that tree and go from cluster hitter to cluster master or cluster hitter to sandblaster only costs us two more kills. So he's actually going to have sandblaster at the end of his wave three match. I'm sorry, at the end of his wave two match. So he spent wave one at cluster hitter and then because of his deeds in wave one he got to sandblaster so he has spent four of his points he still has seven because he still has seven i want him to be at a better gunnery so he's going to spend five of his points to increase his gunnery so now he spent nine he's got two points left i could give him some like it hot i'm actually going to give him human tro because he is crit seeking with that lb10 but that spends his last two points so he goes to sorry he goes to 11 he's now good to go Henry. Henry was a maneuvering ace. I was playing around with it. I don't really like maneuvering ace very much, but maneuvering ace goes into terrain master, which will really help Henry out. So I am going to keep him at maneuvering ace, which costs me six. So he still has two more points, but he cannot go from maneuvering ace, which is a level two, to terrain master which is a level three until i get two more kills because he has two there and i need four and henry being in a skill four four not a big deal he runs pulse lasers on an ice ferret so he's good to go kyle kyle had a sniper in some like it hot he's in a battle cobra prime the Battle Cobra Prime brings two large pulse lasers and two small pulse lasers, so he wants to stay at range. Um, not particularly fond of being close, but 
all things equal, I'm not sure what to do with him at the moment. He's got 11 kills, so I can't give him Sniper yet. Um, honestly, I think he would just benefit more from Gunnery Specialization Energy, because that's what his mech brings, and that's probably what I would have him in. So maybe we try that out. That would be 8 kills which would give him a plus one, excuse me, a minus one to hit with energy for eight kills, or I could just bump his gunnery skill to a three for five points. Now, in order to bump his gunnery again, because we're using the one step rule, I have to increase his piloting skill before I can give him another gunnery bump. So that in itself is going to cost me 8 total. I don't really want to do that right now. I'm not sure that this is where it's supposed to be. Nope, that one stopped at Q. It needed to add P as well. So let me go through and make sure that I actually have all of these formatted the way they're supposed to. Sorry, this one goes to P. That's P, P, P. These ones start in on Q. So this needs to be a P. Sorry, that part of the equation is actually outside of the window. So I'm changing the equations for these to incorporate that other um, block. You actually can see it. I was looking at a different space. So these also are missing that value. So I gave them the clan pilot training, but they didn't get credit for it until now. And then this one. All right, so that actually changes some things a little bit. So I can give him gunnery, um, gunnery specialization energy. Or I could save some points and just give him the natural aptitude gunnery which I might try with that Battle Cobra and Kyle, because if he's not in a Battle Cobra, he's probably in an Adder, which again is all energy. So let's give Kyle the Gunnery Specialization energy, and that's going to eat the other eight points, so this goes to 13. Naomi had Hopping Jack. I could have Naomi use Hopping Jack. That's only going to cost me six. Easy. Done. Lucy had Hopping Jack and Sniper. She's got 14 kills. So at the end of Wave 4, she could have Sniper and be at, um, be at that value. But here's the other thing. Let me go back to Naomi. I would actually rather Naomi be a skill 3-4. So that's going to cost me five points, which still gives me one point, but she's in a summoner D, and there's not really any of the one-point SBAs that come to mind that would be like, oh, yes, this would be great for her to have. Because some like it hot, she's in a heat-neutral mech. Human TRO, arguably that would be nice. She doesn't really have ammo. Oblique attacker, no indirect fire. Cluster hitter, nothing on the cluster table. So I think she's just going to stick with her um, her bank of two points. So I'm going to leave her alone. Rifleman, Lucy has four large pulse lasers in this Rifleman. 
Um, I don't really want a hopping jack. I do want the rifleman to stay at range. And this thing is god awful slow. So Lucy having range master would not be a bad idea for me. So I can I can do range master and then stick her at long range because she's stupid slow. And then I'm only spending six points, which gives me another eight points to be able to play with. Now, I could give her a gunnery bump with the eight and a half points she has available. That would be a really easy thing to do. Let's make life simple. You know what? I don't actually want to do that. We're going to leave the Rifleman to C at skill four because it's cheaper to bid that way. And she's got... Um, range master so that means at long range if she doesn't move because she probably won't she'll stand up somewhere have a good field of view and just shoot things with large pulse lasers I am gonna give her some like it hot because that's two points so she goes to eight she still has six and a half points so I could still give her hopping jack because that's predominantly the way that that um, rifleman has to move around the field. So we'll give her hopping jack and we'll make this text a little bit smaller so it actually fits. That'll spend the other six points. So that brings us to 14. And that half point, I'm just not gonna be able to do anything with that. But Lucy's now good to go. Sandra. Sandra, you are terrible at this. How? Why is this only at two? I'm missing something here. Oh, that says Q. It's supposed to say P. That's why. The rest of these say P. I missed one. Oh, nope, these ones say Q. I'll go in and fix these two because I might end up using them. Um, each of these, each of my players will have the I'm going to make a blank roster and be able to send it to you guys in Discord. So that way you can make your stuff look exactly like my stuff does. And just make life a little bit simple for you. Um, Sandra has an Ice Ferret B. I could give her... Um, oh, what's it called? Cluster Hitter and then give her the Cluster Master for another two points, which would be a good thing for the Ice Ferret B to have because it brings an SRM-4 and an SRM-6. So a Sand Blaster would be less useful because it only Sand Blaster only applies to one kind of weapon. And not even really kind. It's basically one weapon unless you hit double up on it. So, and same thing over here with Lucy. I could give her weapon specialization, weapon specialist large pulse laser, and just be really broken with this Rifleman 2C. But I prefer the flavor of Range Master Long, Some Like It Hot, and Hopping Jack over the min-maxing of, nope, she just has an extra, an extra minus two on her large pulse lasers. Because that would apply at all ranges. But Lucy, I would rather she have a skill bump. Because um, she doesn't have the 
pulse lasers to rely on like Henry does. Um, but she's also not going to get there if I don't give her something. Choices, choices. I'll come back to Sandra. Blair. Blair has 15 kills to spend. Um, so to go from hopping jack to jumping jack, that's going to cost me another 4 kills. So that's going to be 10. So he goes to jumping jack. He has 11 kills left. Hmm... Maybe I don't go to Jumping Jack. Maybe I leave it at Hopping Jack. Because that would give that would bring this back to a 6. I have 15. I could give him... Weapon Specialist, large... Not large. Uh, ER Mediums. Because he runs a Nova. And he really likes running that Nova. And that would be super mean. I could also give him Sniper, for that matter, because he's already at a 3-3. And because he boats ER Mediums, that 12 points would actually be better spent on Weapon Specialist. So we're going to give him Weapon Specialist. And we're going to spend 12 more points. So this goes to 18. I still have 3 points to spend. He runs a Nova Prime. So some like it hot. Would be really helpful too. So he's going to go to 20. And bank 1 right now. There we go. So Blair's good to go. Now we're at to Vlad. Vlad's got 8 points. He he's in a pouncer. Jumping jack would be nice. He doesn't have the points for jumping jack, but he can get hopping jack and some like it hot. And that's probably as good as it's going to get for him. So hopping jack is six points and then some like it hot is two so he's at eight Troy isn't that horned owl he cannot afford hopping jack what could he get he could get a um, a gunnery bump and just be done with that Frederick Frederick is moving to the Adder C, because he has been in a Nova Prime, he's been in a Nova S, and he has struggled to face hug things. So he's going to play a little bit more relaxed, he's going to be a little bit farther back, so Range Master's not a bad thing for him to have. Um, at the start, I would rather he be a better gunner. So we're going to start off by giving him a better gunnery score. I would like to bump him again, so I need to increase his piloting. So there's another three points. So he's not going to get any SPAs as he moves into this Adder C. Um, he gets one kill, and then I, will, I would get, happily give him Cluster Hitter. Because he has the narc on those LRM-15s, He's already gaining some boon to his, um, what's it called? His damage output. His cluster table. There we go. And Dag. Dag, what do I do with you? You're def you definitely don't have enough for jumping jack. You're in an arctic cheetah. Let's make life easy and just make you a 3-4 for 5 points and call that a day. And that... Oh, still got to do mine. 
So none of those are going to be there. I have 22 points. I start with four bonus points and the two for my trial. So whenever we start, I have six points to spend. So I could start with a level two SPA. Are there any level two SPAs that I'm like, ooh, I would really like to have those. Maneuvering Ace would be kind of nice because then I can go into Terrain Master. I don't have cluster tables. Gunnery, speciali gunnery specialization would be nice. I'm actually going to start with natural aptitude gunnery because I I think that's going to work out pretty well. So natural aptitude gunnery, that's going to cost me six points and is essentially where I start the campaign. After that, I would pursue the... Um, Oh, just staying in my Stormcrow Prime. Give me just a second. So I'm going to start with Natural Aptitude Gunnery. From there, I would probably work into um, Weapon Specialist. It's not Weapon Specialist, but Weapon Specialization Energy, because I prefer to stick to the all energy build because I like that Stormcrow Prime. It does work for me. So Gunnery Specialization Energy. So that's going to be another uh, eight points. So six and eight is 14. So then I have another eight and a half points. Um, I'm going to spend three points on my piloting because I hate falling down. And then I can spend another five points and change my gunnery to a two, three. So that five more points brings me to 22. Okay, so I have natural aptitude gunnery, I have gunnery specialization energy, and I'm a two, three pilot. Marva is the other two, three pilot she I need to spend some of her points. Same with Bjorn. Let me go back through and finish my um, vets. So Bjorn still has four points. That would be not enough for multitasker. It would be enough to start into some like it hot, which is not a bad thing for him to have. So that will that will help out a little bit. So I'll spend two more points, bring him to 14. He's got a bank of two, that's okay. Edward. Edward has spent six points on multitasker. Hmm. Let's see. Let me go look at the chart again. Two points SPA to help him out. The cluster table is not going to do him any good. Maneuvering ace wouldn't be bad. The multitasker is six. Oh, he already has multitasker. Duh. Um, I don't want him to get into range bla range master because he's got two very different weapon brackets. Natural aptitude gunnery might be where I go with Edward. That would be simple enough. Yeah, we're gonna do natural aptitude gunnery with him, add another six points here, and then he's got three. I could easily do a piloting. Um, I could also do any of the one point SBAs. I am actually gonna make his pilot one better for, the, for those three extra points and put him at 15. So he's now done. Marva. 
Marva, I don't want her to be a range master. She's got six points. She's in an adder. I typically have her in either an adder or a pouncer, but I also change out her um, loadouts. So she's not always in an adder prime, but she has been often in that adder prime. So I don't know that I want to do a gunnery specialization. Let me go look at the two-point SBAs again. Not multitasker. Natural aptitude might be nice. Some like it hot wouldn't be terrible. Maneuvering ace would be good because she's in a ground-bound machine. But she often stands still, so I don't really want to do Maneuvering Ace. She usually sticks to the back. But I don't want her to have to with Range Master. Mm. Choices. We're going to do Natural Aptitude. Gunnery. And that's how she's going to spend her other six points. So she goes to 11. She's good to go. All right. Now everybody is down to reasonable numbers. The only one I got to figure out still is Henry. But honestly, the ice ferret is expensive enough um, that I don't know that I'm going to be bringing Henry all that often. But, no, I'm going to leave him alone for now, because I can always spend those points later. This is where my roster is going to sit for a while. I think I'm going to like Natural Aptitude Gunnery. We'll see, because I've got three folks that have it. But these skill values are going to change how we bid. I'm gonna t I am taking away the good day mechanic to where we could bid up, but I'm gonna keep the bad day mechanic. So I can still be bid at a at my gunnery skill of two. I cannot be bid at a gunnery skill of one. Um, Henry cannot be bid at a gunnery skill of three. Lucy cannot be bid at a three. They can be bid at a four and a five because it's equal to or less than their actual earned values. So I'm reasoning that out because clan pilots did um, bid away some of their efficiency. They would reduce the number of heat sinks. They would power lasers down um, depending on what was at stake and how they wanted to provoke responses from the people they were fighting. So with that, I think I'm going to conclude this video. Thanks. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Uh, Mouse, Thomas, Kyle, Eric, I hope this worked out well for you guys. Um, you have a very, very inside look as to what I have available. I also need to go back through here and make sure that these values are correct, but I'll do that later. Thanks for watching.